Talk Shoes. Recorded live. Welcome to Electronic Harassment and Organized Talking. I'm about to do an interview with Mecca. Let me share some experience with me at the uh, BHC Fremont Hospital in uh, Fremont, California. We talk about what he experienced there and uh, whether he was stalked like I was, gang stalked, chronically harassed, following, being a patient there. He should be calling in in a minute. In the meantime, my Facebook group, if you want to join for targeted individuals, if you just search for electronic harassment, organized stalking, in the groups of Facebook, you'll find it. My YouTube channel is Ron Paul or Die. His YouTube channel is Mech Lock, M E C space L O C. And now I'm just going to wait for him to get on the call. Welcome to the call, Mecca. Thank you. Um, start off, uh, do you want to start talking about uh, Fremont or do you want to talk about what led up to Fremont or just what you experienced there or what you think is behind that? Um, I, I could talk about what led up to it. Um, uh, I basically got in arguments, um, with my family, um, about little things and, um, I have a habit of going to my room and venting my anger and my brother had come up and he grabbed me and pushed me through the door. And I basically, um, you know, I gave him a little, a little punch, not nothing too bad. And my dad had rushed up the stairs and saw what was going on and they both grabbed me and I didn't really want to fight back because my fa- it was my family and they held me down and my mother came up and she called and then they took me to Valley Medical Center and from there they transferred me to Fremont. And, and how far away from Valley Medical Center is Fremont? Um, I'd say Valley Medical Center is in, in West San Jose and, and so it's probably about 45 minute ambulance ride. And are there no uh, psychiatric hospitals closer that would have made more sense for them to take you to? Because it seemed really strange that they took me there. Um, um, I think it actually might be one of the closer long-term facilities, but they've taken me to other places that were further away also. Okay. And uh, But none that compared to Fremont and the craziness of it all, or was that just the first one that... What is, it, what is it about Fremont that uh, that was so bizarre and all the things that they did to you there and since? Well, in Fremont, I noticed that there was um, a lot of strange patients who, you know, strange not as far as their mental health issues, but they seemed as if they were nervous about being there more than, than they should be. You know, as if they work there and they're nervous that you're going to, to, you know, you're going to understand what they're really there for. And they definitely were very much for the program of the hospital. They explained things in a way that was consistent with what, you know, you they were taught there, but they really went out of the way to reinforce it. You know, most patients who agree with the, agree with the people aren't really that passionate about agreeing with them. They're just kind of like, well, we agree, and if you don't agree with us, whatever. But these these patients were suspicious. They seemed like they wanted to go out of their way to impress upon you that the that you should listen to the doctor and they're right. And they, you know they can do no wrong and and they're pretty much just like the staff there. They seem like another member of the staff, but undercover. That's interesting because um, as I mentioned in that YouTube video that you saw, the guy who uh, claimed to be a CIA agent and the and the do- and the doctors even referred to him as doctor his name, he said he was doctor, CIA, and a lawyer. He, when I went to his cell or his, you know, his uh, room and asked him, hey, what's the best way I can get out of here the fastest? He said, you know, just take your meds, just take your meds. And uh, was not the answer I was looking for because when he, uh, when he first got in, he, uh, he got into his cell, took all his clothes off, and then there was some altercation between him and the staff, and the staff looked like, you know, they had five people ready to go. It looked like they were about to just hold him down and inject him with whatever. But he's like, I know my rights. I'm a lawyer. Like, you, 
you can't touch me. And, and they, just, they just completely backed off. And I, and I, and like, they were like standing like way far down the hallway. And I just, and I, so I just walked over and handed them some sweatpants. And meanwhile, they're like telling me back up, he's dangerous or something. And I was like, no, he isn't. Like, and I just handed them some sweatpants and they like applauded me. But, uh, yeah, he was just like, oh, he's taking meds. That's how you get out. Yeah. It's very interesting. Um, yeah, almost in a coincidence, I just had a cop roll by me. I'm, I'm at the park right now making this call. He was kind of looking at me hard. <laughs> it might be just a coincidence, but it, it's kind of interesting, you know. <laughs> yeah. They just like to mean mug. Who knows? Um, but uh, so what What else? Uh, another thing I noticed about there was that pretty much every single staff member was a different ethnicity, which is sort of like uh, disorienting while you're there. Like you have to play him with you. Like, like you have to put on a whole different, um, like you have to talk to each one in their own language in a way, if you know what, do you know what I mean? Oh, uh, yeah. Like there's a lot, there's a lot of Indians, I think. There's an Iran, Iranian, but uh, yeah. Asian, there, there was, uh, it was hard to even communicate with the people because it's so, they're coming off from different cultures, I guess that's just what three months like, I don't know. Yeah, my my um, psychiatrist was an Indian there, Indian woman. Was it Warish or Dash or or? Um, uh, I don't really yeah. remember her name. Mine was an Indian woman named Doctor Warish. Strange name, Jop Kaur Warish, and her husband was also a psychiatrist there. Oh yeah, I think that's a different one. I think I, I've met her um, before and her husband. Yeah. And uh, she was a she was a nightmare. I gave her a dirty look one time because she missed my appointment the previous day. You know, your only chance to get out that day. And she had me restrained and injected just for giving her a dirty look. Yeah, they're definitely control freaks, and um, the the law enforcement wants them to be that way because they want people to get used to complying with law enforcement, regardless how ridiculous um, their orders are or their requests are. What was your uh, what was your diagnosis? Mine was mine ended up being bipolar, schizoaffective, paranoid, delusional. I think was the complete one of the that's just gotten reduced to nothing, just adverse reaction to marijuana. Yes, yeah, so I've had many different um, diagnoses. But there, they diagnosed me as bipolar. Yeah, I think be a favorite. Um, and then you mentioned in a comment. I'd asked you previously about this when I first saw your YouTube videos if you experienced the stalking and uh, electronic stuff, harassment after, afterwards. And, and then you mentioned gang stuff in your comment earlier today. You, uh, have you been getting gang stuff, electronic harassment? Uh, yes, um, and it, it almost seems like it's done in a way to where I want to, you know, that I can notice that they're doing it. And I think that they're doing that so that I make these claims and, you know, that becomes part of, this, you know, schizoaffective or schizophrenia. You know, the belief that the government is after you is actually part of the symptoms of mental disorders that they've printed and published in the past in the DSM, et cetera. Of course, yes. And uh, why do you think they chose to do that to you? Do you th did you see anything um, highly suspicious in there, like of an illegal nature, or do you think that they're, just, they're doing it just because they're what they like to do and that they, they'll do it to anybody that comes in there they just pick them randomly or what do you think why do you think they picked you well I, I made videos about Fremont Hospital and pretty much very shortly afterwards they started doing it to me and also I've made uh, videos about you know secret societies government plots and schemes you know in the past so I, I believe that they're doing it to me um, to discredit me and to get even with me and to get me to comply, to be a yes man instead of a questioning man. Definitely. And, uh, yeah, I, I put a, I put a review on Yelp of uh, the hospital. I don't know how, how soon after I'm going to check the date on that review. Um, see how long after I was starting. I left it in. Yeah. I left the, uh, I left the review in 2011. So yeah, the stocking started. <sighs> within five months of leaving that review. 
and the review I put on there is completely insane. I was put here for two weeks or so when I was 18. I'm 20 now. It was the worst experience of my life, and I didn't begin to feel normal again until over a year later. First of all, I'm the one who called the police in the first place after asking people I know and people inside the hospital why they were put in there. It's often because they were misinterpreted by police. They wouldn't let me have my medication at all the whole time I was there. I prescribed medication for my doctor. I didn't use it. That was what I wanted. And when I protested, they held me down and injected me with Haldol. I went in feeling totally normal except tired because it was 3 in the morning when they finally transferred me there from Marine General Hospital, another terrible psych ward. And when I finally left two weeks later, I was drooling, couldn't talk without stuttering, and couldn't think of certain words, shaking uncontrollably. And the only way I got out was lying to my psychiatrist, Dr. Warish, saying, I promise I won't take my medication. They had me on lithium, Haldol, Depakote, Ativan, Respiradol. Uh, the meetings with your psychiatrist are your only perceived opportunity to get out of the place, and I gave my doctor a dirty look for missing my, missing my appointment with her the day before and said, why didn't you show up? And, and she got on her cell phone. Hey, guys. So I said, they have to inject me more alcohol because I threatened Dr. Warish. I told them what had happened. I said it didn't matter, and I said, well, if I can still have my court case, I'll take the injection because I was in the trial they have in there, and they promised I'd still be able to go to my case. Five guys held me down, injecting me with Haldol again. Then I asked when my case was, and they said, you're not having any court case. You just threatened the staff, and now you're going to sleep. The next thing I remember is waking up, not being able to move in my little bed thing there. I was totally paralyzed. I tried to force my body to move, and after a few seconds, my left leg started convulsing for another few seconds. And then I was able to move again, but I still have not regained full feeling in the right side of my body. This might be a minor detail of some, but I remember in my zombie state in there, a staff member asked, are you hearing any voices today? And I said angrily, I never hear any voices. I didn't like the way he asked the question with today on the end, so that even if I answer no, it still implies that there are other times when I do hear voices. Um, and then I go on to talk about that there was that girl in there. Oh, man, there was a girl in there who I was talking about, I was in there talking about secret societies and Illuminati and all this stuff. And this girl comes up to him, she's like, how do you know about that? This patient, she was like 16, and... uh I was like, I don't know, I research it. I'm a conspiracy researcher. And then, and then she's like, Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm like part of that. Like, I'm like a sex slave. And my parents, she said, that they owe my body, and that whenever I get unruly, they just put me in here. And then that CIA guy I mentioned, um, I'm not even reading or reading that. I remember this? The CIA guy, he goes up to her, and he's he's talking to her, and he's like trying to like mac on her. It's like 16 year old girl, 50 year old CIA guy, and. uh, and he, like, kissed her on the cheek. It was disgusting. And uh, anyway, he, he started doing this weird thing with his hand, like, next to her face, like, right in front of her eyes, like, twiddling his fingers in her eyes. And, and then she, like, desperately looked over at me, and she's like, why are you doing that? Like, my old boyfriend used to do that. And what it looked like he was trying to do was, like, uh, access, like, a, you know, uh, if you're, are you familiar with, like, multiple personality disorder and mind control in that area? Yes. So it looked like he was trying to access one of her alter personalities with that being the trigger for it, like they program in the alter and then the way you access it is by with some visual cue, which I guess would have been the, uh, the finger movement. Um, anyways, so yeah, I, so I talk about that. I, I don't know, if, I hope I didn't name them in this review. Yeah, but I've said in the, in the review on Yelp that he was a guy in the CIA connected to Bush Sr. And there was another guy so and then and then just yesterday I find out that yes the hospital was literally owned by Bush Senior. Uh, did you see that link? Um, no, I, I didn't get to see the link yet. It's in the description of the video if you want to check it out. But I mean, doesn't that just sort of explain the whole thing? Like why <laughs> they're literally just run by like the worst guy ever? Yeah, that's crazy. So. What sort of stuff uh, with the electronic harassment? Do you, do, you, do you hear voices in your head or that you didn't hear before the hospital? Um, no, but I do believe that they have a way to um, talk to you um, through the computer using your speakers, right? And they talk in a way that you can't really record it. It's, it, it has something to do with the pitches of their voice or, you know, maybe they have some kind of machine that does it because I've heard of something like that. You know, yeah. and every once in a yeah. while, I think I hear something, but I wouldn't really call it hearing voices.